Striker Holmgren is my name. I work part-time for Nordforsk and I also work as a professor at Uppsala University. So I am part of this uh, problematic problem uh, that we heard about earlier. I will try to uh, present to you uh, a report, the result of an investigation that was done by Nordforsk uh, with me as the project leader uh, on request by the Nordic Council of Ministers and the title of this report is Open Access to Research Data, Status, Issues and Outlook. Uh, and if you want to look at the report you have the, the full uh, uh, web address to the report, to the news item actually for the report at the Nordforsk homepage there. If you don't remember all of it you might remember just uh, www.nordforsk.org and then you can look from there. Uh, so, uh, the assignment that we got from the Council of Ministers, it was this one, uh, here expressed in, in Swedish, but in summary it is, okay, please describe the status for open access to, to data in the Nordic countries, and also try to pinpoint some issues and things that you can work on together in the Nordics. And, and why did we get this uh, assignment to Nordforsk? Well, we have been working with uh, issues on open data and also uh, open access in general, open science, for some time. So already in 2013 uh, we actually organized a workshop in, in Brussels as part of, of the ERA platform work that was done by Nordforsk at that time. And we had presentations from, from major actors in Europe. Uh, this was sort of an early initiative uh, because the discussion at that point was very much still focused on uh, research uh, or open access to publications. We had another meeting in Reykjavik about uh, one and a half year later, rather small meeting with different actors from the Nordic countries and also from the EU and, and internationally. And this was start of a, sort of a starting point for, for what was done later in, in Nordforsk. In the strategy of Nordforsk it says that, uh, uh, well, we should be ensuring open access, and that means in the context of all types of research results. And we have done other th concrete things. We have pilot implementations on op op open access to uh, research data and uh, open access to research results in some calls. And we also have uh, concrete actions in, in the new version of the Nordic eScience Action Plan. Uh, so I will try to pinpoint some important things in, in this uh, report. First of all, the task was to look at open access to data. And as you've heard today uh, already, I think uh, this is clear that it's not possible to separate a discussion on open access to data from data management, sharing of data, and also to open access to other types of research results you need to look at this from a more holistic perspective. And that, that's a point that was made in, in the um, report. Uh, also, uh, the basic idea of open science is important. It's not just providing open access to, to data as such. And we al have already he heard about the, the two underlying arguments here. One argument that is highly relevant and, and valid, I think, when we talk to researchers and in the research environment. You improve the quality of research by having open access, transparent processes, etc. You avoid uh, or at least reduce the risk of fraud. You make research reproducible, etc. So this is important, an important point. Then we have also heard uh, the argument that is more used by politicians and, and uh, policy makers, the, change into uh, research as something which needs a business model, okay, uh, improve the impact of research. And of course open science can be used for both these arguments and we heard a very interesting uh, presentation by Jutta Heider earlier about the sort of tension between these two. We have not gone into that tension in the, in the report, but uh, I can make a point here. Uh, Researchers do still have some doubts when it comes to, to open science. Uh, some of the reactions that you get from researchers are more emotional. Uh, that's natural. Researchers are also humans, of course. Uh, some of them are uh, quite sort of 
important, they really mean something, why should I bother about this? I have a personal career to look into, so I need some sort of rewarding system. And it's been mentioned already by several uh, presenters earlier. Also, if you want to make data available and openly shareable, etc., it will cost something, it will cost an effort. It requires something of the researcher. Uh, these two, and I'll come back to them a little bit later, I think, and that is said also in the report, are really important. The other ones, well, it is an internal discussion in the uh, uh, research community uh, how to deal with these other issues. And I think there is a responsibility for the research community, and now I'm stepping outside of the report a bit and talking as a researcher, it's a responsibility for the research community to discuss these issues. We need to make clear that there should be, it should be possible to trust research. There should not be fraud in research. It should be possible to reprodu reproduce the results. And to do this, we need to take some actions, possibly. Okay, so what, what do we find in the report? Well, I think we are now in Finland, and there is a reason for that. Uh, Finland has really come a long way when it comes to, to uh, open science and actions on open science. And this is also clear, clearly stated in, in the report. It's a flagship initiative, as a, as a national initiative. Uh, there is a ministry that has taken on the role of leading this uh, development. There is a roadmap. There are handbooks, there is a sequence of implementation projects. There will, <coughs> will and has been follow-ups and evaluations, and I think we will hear more about that later this afternoon. And for a long time also there has been an established infrastructure for storing data. So uh, this has all happened. Uh, also at the level of, of the Research Council, the Academy of Finland, they have taken this on and implemented uh, open science actions in the calls and in the evaluations of proposals. And I would say uh, that they are, Finland, uh, is, they are quite far ahead of the other Nordic countries today. Norway has also uh, done substantial work. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, in Norway there was a first action five, six years ago uh, maybe a little bit more actually, which sort of stopped because the task seemed overwhelming. We cannot deal with open access to data, it is too complicated. But then the process started again uh, a couple of years ago with a major effort on uh, interviewing and or uh, uh, asking the researchers in, in Norway, what do you think about sharing data and making data available? So there was a questionnaire, a big effort on, uh, on getting input from the researchers. Uh, basically one third of the Norwegian researchers answered this questionnaire. Uh, and as an outcome, the Norwegian Research Council has a policy for how they work with open, re open access to research data. And, well, open access is by default, but there are some exceptions. And uh, there is the last one especially interesting then, if you see that this, the cost of providing the data uh, op in open access is too high, then okay, you don't have to do it. And you have to argue for this, of course, in your proposal then. Uh, because, still the re because of the responses from the researchers saying that, well, we don't really have the infrastructure needed for storing the data, and we don't have the system for citations, uh, the policy in Norway is built more on carrots than on sticks. So it's recommendations, it's not hard rules. But for, you can, for example, uh, include costs for providing uh, data openly in project budgets, operating costs for making data available. It's perfectly eligible. And the policy will also be reviewed in the future, that is clear. So some general findings in this report, and I hope that you can find some time to, to read all of it. Uh, well, the Nordic countries often started off early in this. So there were early discussions, and except then for possibly, or except then for Finland, the progress has sort of slowed down a bit. 
and this is because of, of different reasons in different countries, I think, but often the overall discussion at, within the research communities and at universities is in fact lacking. At least I see that at home in, in Sweden. Uh, we also see that there are a large number of actors, nationally, internationally, that all, uh, they are of different types, there are different levels, they all produce reports and recommendations. Uh, of course, Nordforsk does this also, so we contribute to this, but <laughs> the, the, these recommendations, reports are written from different perspectives and the conclusions might be a bit similar, but somehow they are not in complete agreement. So there's really a need to consolidate the discussions, conclude on recommendations and try to align what is said about open access to data and, and open uh, science in, in general. And there are concepts being used, big data, cloud, and uh, nobody really knows what they mean. And that's of course a reason for using them because you can fill it with your own, your own views then. So what we do in the report is that there are actually uh, three, four pages on terminology where we try to define what, what we think is meant by, by these different terms. And then there are a number of issues identified. We have heard that already now, uh, earlier, that structured data management is really important even if you don't talk about open access. So just sharing data between researchers needs that you have you have to take care of your data. We have also heard that, well, you cannot build one solution that will fit all type of research data. That will fail, that type of approach. Uh, in the end, the uptake will depend on the anchoring in the research communities. And, and again, going back to Jutta's presentation and uh, the responsibility that I think researchers and the research community has, we need to take this seriously. We need to take the discussion. We need to come to some conclusions. And we should describe as researchers how this system should work. Uh, in the end, of course, you cannot store everything. So someone needs to decide what to store and what to preserve. And that uh, goes together with, OK, who owns the data? That's a future point. So there needs to be systems put in place to make decisions on this. Uh, that type of system probably uh, connects to who owns the research data. And if you own data, that can come with opportunities, but also with responsibilities, of course. So if the universities own the research data, well, it's their responsibility to take care of it. Uh, in a data system, data management, it has often been that the researcher has had a USB stick or a, a disk, uh, and he has done all of the, act, fulfilled all the roles himself, producing the data, analyzing the data, storing the data, making the data available, etc. Uh, today we have, have to come to a system where we have specialized actors to make this uh, data uh, uh, data sharing and open access to data cost efficient and really useful and sustainable. Uh, okay, of course someone has to pay for this, and, but this is also a risk. So you can get into situations where uh, an entity says that, well, we are not going to pay for this, and another entity from the other says, we are not going to pay either, and you spend 10 years uh, discussing who will solve the, the, the financing situation. Uh, research funders also have a great responsibility, opportunity, because uh, money, of course, talks in this. So researchers need to take their responsibility. Funding organizations, like, for example, Nordforsk, can push the development building on what the researchers think uh, th it should be. Data infrastructure is needed. I referred to that in the Finnish uh, example. Uh, the report then stops with conclusions, uh, so some recommendations. The first recommendation is fairly natural. So we have uh, started at least an exchange of knowledge and ideas at the Nordic level 
and uh, this should continue. That's pretty obvious. And Nordforsk could do a little bit about that, but other entities, like for example the Research Data Alliance, uh, etc., could also contribute to, to this, and the National Data Archives, etc. There are also some actions that are on specific issues that are valuable at the Nordic scene. So, for example, we have uh, large registers of, of health data that could be used in some way in the Nordic setting if you manage to, uh, to use that data, share that data in some way where you still protect the, the individual, uh, individual rights. Uh, and then finally, the final recommendation, which I think is sort of most of important for Nordforsk itself, is that from Nordforsk uh, or from other funding agencies of sort of a smaller character, because Nordforsk has a small budget, you could do experiments. So you could implement uh, calls where you have the full aspects of open science from the planning of the call to the final evaluation of and we heard a presentation earlier about how you should write your application so that it fits into this type of, of open science world. Well, you could do the holistic picture, starting from uh, the very basics to the final evaluation in an entity like Nordforsk. There you should probably start with an easy case, like uh, a community that is fairly used to sharing data. Uh, and this is now an ongoing discussion in the Nordforsk board to try to come to, to this type of first implementations. They are rare. There are efforts, but they are rare. And I think that this is uh, somewhere where Nordforsk can really contribute. So I think I will stop there. <laughs>